This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution, featuring the Orion HOTAS current and future configurations. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's the 16th of January 2022. Every now and then a mod in DCS comes along that just blows your socks off and we've just had one of those moments. I introduced to you the free mod for the UH-60L Blackhawk. I wasn't sure what to expect when this mod came out. It turned out to be extremely complex and well done. Now I've got to show to you as much as I possibly can in about 30 minutes maximum. So we're gonna crush as much information in as we can. We are going to cover installation, options, setup, radios, controls, cockpit and HUD, cold start, taxiing, basic flight, lights, navigation, RWR and countermeasures, air to air refueling, multi-crew and damage model. Let's start with installation. You will start on the official H60 project Discord. I will give you the link in the video description. Come in there, look in announcements and you'll find a whole bunch of links in here. Most of them are just mirrors because so many people are trying to download the mod. So I just clicked on this latest one here. It downloads a zip file. Open up the zip file with WinZip, WinRAR or whatever you choose to use. Take this folder here, right click, copy. Then you want to locate your saved games area for DCS. For me, it's C drive users. My user, save games. DCS open beta for me. Mods, if you don't have that folder, make it. Aircraft, if you don't have that folder, make it. Right click and paste, and that's it done. Super easy to install, and it's a safe mod to install. Start the game up. If it's installed correctly, then you'll see along your bottom of your modules, UH-60 Lima. Next, basic setup from main menu. Options, special. Scroll down, UH-60. Can adjust the AVS7, which is the hard for VR users. I'll turn that off for me. Okay, next, mission editor, create a new mission. Here's one I made earlier. To place a aircraft in to fly, find an airbase or anywhere actually. New helicopter group, place it down there. USA country, type, find obviously the UH60 Lima. Skill, client, type. Probably take off from ground or take off from ground hot if you don't want to have to start it up. It's up to you. Next, payload. At the time of covering the mod in its early release, we have no weapons per se. We have fuel tanks. We can have them on outer pylons only on the wings or all pylons only on the wings. We can also reduce payload. We can also remove pylon. If you want to go pylon and wing less like that, I suggest clicking on clean down here. The model itself is what we in my country call bloody excellent, to be honest, like almost professional quality, if not professional quality. So the guys that are doing this just really know their stuff. It's really impressive. Also a bunch of liveries that you can choose from. Anything you want here. You can choose your internal fuel load in pounds. Gun doesn't do anything at the moment anyway. Unfortunately, you can't choose your chaff and flare at the moment. You're just giving 30 chaff and no flare. Rope length doesn't do anything at the moment. Next, additional properties. Do you want to have the fuel probe on so that you can air to air refuel? Yep. Do you want to disable multi-crew ability and multiplayer? Yes, well, not for me. Also, if you're going to do multi-crew, as we'll have a look at later, who do you want to have priority to decide who controls the plane? Instructor, pilot, either of them ask, or either of them take. And finally, radios. Pretty awesome plane. If you're into radios like me, this is your kind of helicopter. There are five radios, ANARC201 right, that frequency band there, and it's an FM radio. The ANARC164, which is your default UHF, which does that frequency band there. It's a UHF and it's uh, AM. That's the one you're gonna use if you're gonna to talk to any AI in DCS. You've got the ANARC186, which is that frequency band there, the HF AM. You've got the 201 left, which is that frequency band there, it's FM, it's a repeater radio. And finally, the ANARC220, that frequency band there, and that's a high frequency, and I think that's FM, but I stand to be corrected. And for practice, we are going to talk to Dunkirk, which is set as standard on 250.5. 0 megahertz you can also change all your presets here if you want note very important if you want to use these radios to talk to humans like through the SRS or possibly the in-game radio later on you can use any of these radios they will all work if you want to talk to some kind of AI like 
the air to air refueling guy or the base or a wingman or something like that you can only use the AN ARC 164 controls select the UH-60L here I guess we start on axis commands first you will need a zoom view if you're not VR or maybe you can get it to work on VR so I've got that set wheel brakes I've got set on the actual toe brakes of my rudder pedals roll cyclic as you stick left and right pitch cyclic as you stick forwards and back pedals is your anti-torque pedals or your rudder pedals for an aeroplane then you'll need two kind of throttle handles one will be this the collective that is the angle of attack of the blades here that's how much lift you get out of the blades coupled with that you'll need engine one plus two power control levers and i've got that with my kind of second engine throttle if you know what i mean that's all of the axes next lighting we have controllable movable landing and searchlights so you want to bind the on off on each of them and the extend and the retract and the left and right also note we have flashlight next note external cargo is here but as far as we're aware it's not working at the moment probably something for the future and uh, next crew control note we can change the different positions with one two three and four and if we're a multi-crew with another human c will request access to become the pilot or take control of the plane I should say. Next, cyclic. There are two different ways of trimming the aircraft. You can trim it either by pushing and holding trim release here, then when you have the attitude of the aircraft correct, release trim release and it will set the trim. That's how I like to do it. And then you can also reset trim to neutral if you want, or you can trim it more like an aeroplane with these up, down, left, right commands. It depends, or you can do both. Next, countermeasures, chaff dispense. Next, AN AVS 7, especially the HUD. You just want to turn it on and off, and you can have the brightness as well, up and down if you want as well. It's a super cool HUD. AFCS, it says in the manual to bind this for manual control of the stabilator. I don't know why you would ever want control, manual control of the stabilator, so I've just left that one off. And that is all my commands set up for the early access version. Next, cockpit and HUD. Now I need the engine turned on for the HUD, so I'm going to skip to a hot version. Now for a mod, this is incredibly good quality, like if not one of the best mods out there. It's almost professional mod quality in terms of all the buttons and switches and textures, as you can see. I see RWR talking to me at the moment. Have a look around. I mean, this really is the kind of quality. I mean, this is this thing about the mod makers. The mod makers are now getting so good that they could really be charging, they can't, they're not allowed to, but they could really be charging money for these things. Look at these textures and stuff we're looking at. I think that looks absolutely fantastic, and that's without even any lighting turned on. So, as for the cockpit and the instruments themselves, it's about 60 to 70, maybe even up to 80% interactive, passively and actively, by which I mean you can read dials, and you can go and press buttons, which is really impressive, especially for a first release. And rather than me manually going around every single button for all the stuff that's working and usable at the moment, I will show extract from the manual. So we have right instrument panel, central instrument panel, left instrument panel. main console and the upper panel if you're in here and you don't know which controls are interactive if you just hover your mouse over them if they go green like that you know you can use them if the cursor stays yellow like that there you can't use that control next we're going to press the button we saw earlier to turn the HUD on so let's press that and we now have helmet mounted HUD pretty cool if I hold it there I'll show you the symbology there and a really cool thing that Simba's just figured out we can have these commands here left gunner hatch open close right gunner hatch open close cargo door left cargo door right and watch this ba 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 -ba -ba -ba. And one thing I haven't shown you is you start a standard in the instructor position here. Press two, pilot's position. Press three, left gunner position. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Four, right gunner position. Ba -ba. Pretty cool, huh? So I'll hope you agree, and that is really impressive stuff so far. Massive kudos to the guys that are putting this together. Next, I am going to jump in a cold aircraft, and we'll do a cold start. Cold start, so... 
Top panel, Gen 2, right click on. Gen 1, right click on. APU, Gen on. Right, these are all right clicks. Battery on. Next, let's get some lighting on the go so we can see what we're doing. On, 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 on. You don't have to do this, by the way. I just like it nice and right for my silly old man eyes. Next, APU on. Right click. Next, advisory panel, check we've got APU on and wait for, there we go, APU generator on. Next, check the AHRS, make sure we're aligning, and you can see aligning, that light will go out when it's finished. Next, tail will lock as needed, I always start with it on. Next, what I'm going to refer to as the AFCS panel, that's not quite right, but it's near enough. Here, we've got some really interesting commands. First of all, the stabilator, which is that guy there, we definitely want automatic control of it, so automatic if we don't want automatic we can do manual slew there SAS stability channels one and two on what I'll do is I'll flick up on the screen the descriptions from the manual of these systems they can explain it better than I can next trim on next FPS optional but I'm not going to have it on next boost on over to our stabilator indicator which is there make sure it's in the down position and it is next engines up here fuel selectors left engine right click once to dir right engine right click once to dir next engine to starter press there and move the lever with a right click into idle monitor gauges engine speed engine temperature engine started and stable rinse and repeat for engine one so starter check uncaged throttle right click monitor engine stable next power control lever fully forward this is not the collective this is the power control lever and watch the rpm and the torque check next advisory caution panel check it's empty of yellow and red signs and it is next center panel again GPS nav mode to either MGRS or lat long. Press enter twice. Once, twice. ADF panel here. Master mode to ant or ADF. VOR panel. Turn it on. AHRS panel here. Check slave. Yep. Confirm that. Make sure the HSI here, currently pointing due north, is matching the E2B. Magnetic compass. Due north. Correct. Next, radios, we'll come back to that in a second. RWR, on. Probably a good idea to arm your chaff because we're going to forget otherwise. Hard or helmet mounted sight, on with the control we saw earlier. APU, off, we don't need it anymore. Where is it? There. And APU generator off, make sure you get the right one. These are left clicks now. There. Apart from the radios, that is us set up and ready to fly radios we've got five radios as we looked at earlier all of them we can use to link with SRS and the ANARC 164 UHF radio we can talk to AI with so we're going to show talking to the AI we have a tower here at Dunkirk which is on 250.40 megahertz AM and we found that out because we can see in the mission editor so we've got to turn the right radio on first this is the panel for the 164 radio and it's linked to this switch here so turn that on and we're going to transmit on radio 2 as well, so that's 2. Up to the radio header itself, master mode, main. Do we want to use a manual frequency selection or a preset? We can use a preset like that. We're going to go manual, and we're going to just change the digits. To go 250, 40. Now, it's not fully integrated yet, but when it is, at some point in the future, you'll be using this push to talk. For the time being, we're going to have our easy communication turned on in our mission editor or in our game options, which bypasses this push to talk for the time being. And we'll press this instead. Communication menu. Communication menu. Up here, we've got the tanker, an ATC or ground crew, so ATC. Dunkirk at the top there, if you can read that. Request startup. So that shows you at the moment how we can talk to AI and we'll use the same process talk to humans on SRS. Next, taxiing. So, first I want to show how to put the parking brake on. We're going to pump our tow brakes like that. 
pull this lever up, let it down, let go of the tow brakes. Parking brake is now on, and we are safe. If you want to remove the parking brake, you can either press that again, or you can pump the tow brakes again, and that will remove it. Next, we want to turn our tail wheel lock off. Ping. This is going to allow us to steer properly on the ground. Now, we're going to use our cyclic forwards to give us a bit of uh, forwards motion. There we go. We're going to use our uh, pedals left and right. Whee! Oh, <laughs> careful not to roll it over. And we can basically drive it along the ground like a truck, which is awesome. Uh, to brake, pull the uh, cycle pitch back, go forwards. And I'm using collective zero, by the way, so I'm not using any collective for this. So we can drive it on the ground really well, uh, which is a lovely thing to do. So let's put that back there. I'm just going to put everything back on. Tailwheel lock on. Next, some very basic flight. Now, I'm not going to pretend. Most of you guys out there are probably better virtual helicopter pilots than me. But just in case there's someone out there, that this might help. We fly very simply with the cyclic. Roll left and right. Pitch forwards and back. The trimmer, as we described earlier in the video. And the anti-torque pedals left and right. Oh, and the collective. Power will always be set to maximum, so we don't worry about that. And the collective, that is what gives us the lift. So, collective up slowly. The power obviously is set to maximum and kept maximum all the time. Okay. Now rolling. Roll us a little bit like an aeroplane. Pitch. We'll dip our nose down a bit like an aeroplane, but make us fly forwards. Ooh. Uh, pitch aft stick. We'll put our nose up and make us fly backwards or slower. So that's how you brake or go faster. You're going to balance that with the amount of collective that you've got on at all time. It's a constant balancing act between pitch forwards and backwards, like that, and the collective on and off. As well as that, you've got your anti-torque pedals, which you're going to use left and right to counter the torque of the main rotor. So all of the time you're balancing the collective up and down, the pitch forwards and backwards with uh, a bit of trim, and your anti-torque pedals. It's a dynamic thing. If you ask any helicopter pilot they'll constantly be modulating those three elements and then if we want to turn tightly we can add a bit of roll in as well rather than using the pedals to turn add a bit of roll and a bit of aft stick a bit like an aeroplane and it's pretty much as simple as that the rest you'll just work out as you go have a few crashes and it will start to become second nature in a few minutes i suspect i'm it's actually my first flight so see if i can bring it back in for a landing Simba, the gear is not retractable, is that right? That is correct. It is not retractable. In terms of landing, it's kind of exactly the same as what we talked about before. It's just balancing our collective, our cyclic, mainly forwards and backwards with a tiny bit of roll, and our anti-torque pedals, which are different speeds, different amounts of anti-torque pedal will be required, and avoiding the mighty VRS Vortex Ring State which is uh, a bit like when an aeroplane stalls, I guess you could say, but it's the version for the helicopter. So that's something you need to be careful of. Uh, I'm going to put this down right there. Now, I've only literally downloaded this plane a few minutes ago, so this helicopter, so I, ha I don't know what it feels like, but just from running around there, it feels relatively calm, collected, and easy to control. So already I can tell this is probably a really good helicopter mod to start with uh, compared to some of the other ones out there that are very jittery this one is very controlled now is that to do with the uh, stability and whatnot probably it seems very easy to fly at the moment but we're going to have a proper fly around in a minute and see what she can do next i'd like to show off the lights which are pretty cool so let me just put myself on hover good enough pause it there ping as you saw up here on the ceiling panel we've got a whole load of lights we can choose from these knobs here these knobs here these switches here for a mixture of interior and exterior lighting, nav lights, cabin lights, position lights, anti-collision lights, as well as that, we've got searchlight and landing light. So, searchlight activate, ping, and I can now boss the sky about with the controls that we saw earlier, which is pretty cool, right? And we can have the landing light on, ping, and that can be driven independent to the searchlight. So we've got some awesome lighting options. RWR and countermeasures. This is a radar warning receiver. It is telling us that there is a radar contact there. It's a SAM, it's an SA6, I think. 
that azimuth and there's also one over there which I think is an SA-10. At the time of making the video it doesn't tell you which type of emitters they are or should I say it only tells you the certain types of emitters not the ones that I'm using in this mission. That will be probably be populated later. We can change the intensity of it there. So that tells us which radar threats we've got. In terms of actively defending ourselves we can arm our chaff system again. We've got 30 chaff here. Cannot change the amount at the moment and we press to fire the chaff thing and you can see the counter goes down next navigation our primary navigation instruments are going to be our HSI here our horizontal situation indicator and what I usually refer to as an ADI an attitude direction indicator or a VSI in this aircraft it's called and the navigation is complex and exhaustive in this aircraft and we're not going to go through it in this video because it needs a half hour video on its own at least the following is being modelled in the aircraft. Heading mode, altitude hold mode, ADF, that's automatic direction finding, VOR, similar to ADF, ILS, instrument landing system, and various sub-modes of Doppler GPS. So it'll be interesting looking into that. Next, air-to-air -air refueling, and I need to show you from the mission editor. When you set your refueler, make sure it's this guy here, the KC-130J that comes with the Black Hawk mod. It's got an extra one because we need it to fly extra slow for these helicopters. So we are literally going to make it to speed 120 knots here. Otherwise set it up the same as a normal tanker. I'm here, Simba's there, we're on multiplayer. Each of us has got about 20% fuel. In fact, we can look at our fuel gauge there. It's about, I don't know, 250 pounds altogether. First thing we're going to do is extend our beautiful probe. It's that one there I forgot to show earlier on. Extend retract. Watch this. It just keeps on going. Look at that. Go go gadget. Extend. <laughs> there's so many there's so many bad things we can do with this Simba. I'm feeling really oh, sick yeah. at the moment, but this even this makes me happy. Set my power to maximum. Check. Right, you lead Simba. Let's go and get that guy. We've got our easy communications turned on. Right. I haven't tried this by the way. Simba, have you tried this yet? Uh yes, right. I did try it in single player but now that the camera's on I'm probably gonna mess right. this up well I'll need you to hold my hand as well I'm gonna put my uh, extender out extender go 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 gadget thing <laughs> uh, so fun right have you declared your intentions to insert yourself in him yet uh, no okay I'm gonna do the first one so um, we got up here communications menu tanker tender of fuel Hopefully he responds. So I'm going to guess, I just do this like a plane. I get behind him, I do ready pre-contact, and then I put the thing in the thing. Is that right? That is how you do it. Well, it's my first time actually Kevin Errigood fly as well, and I'm liking it so far. It's, it reminds me of KF-50. It's not particularly organic, like, say, a Huey, but it is easy to fly and it is actually relatively rewarding I'm, I'm quite happy with so far look at my giant lance lance your face are you sir lance a lot uh yes i am and imagine the things i could lance if we put this in a multiplayer mission lance the heck out of like flankers and stuff right here he comes are you trying to yes. trying to go jousting no yeah oh, we need to joust after this right okay so but i'm gonna try and get near him No, it didn't work. Try again. Ready, recontact. Return, recontact. Ah, come on, let me have it. Ready, recontact. Clear okay, I've got it. I'm running in left, doodah. Refueling a friggin' helicopter from a plane. Who even knew this would be... I'm never going to... You know what? I can already tell I can't do this. This is way above my skill envelope. At the best of times, I'm not a good helicopter pilot. And I will not claim to be. Okay, I'm trimmed now. I can't... The depth... Where's the depth of the willy? I can't... How long is it? It's, it's too far. I know how long my probe is. Yeah, I put the... Oh. I nearly got it in. Oh my god, this is hard. Everything about this is wrong. Everything about this feels wrong. Oh, it's so hard. 
It's so it the hard! It said the maker's in the chat. Is there a damage model on this thing? It's very basic. There's a sort of damage model, but it's not really not really going yet. I've seen your rotor blades fall off when I was uh, trying to figure out how to take off. Oh my god. How did you... I bet you didn't do this, Simba. It's impossible. Hey, no, I did it. I found something I just cannot do. Oh my god. It's like chasing a friggin'... Come here, you wench! <laughs> it's like my first date with my wife. <laughs> uh, yeah! Oh, I'm so happy! I'm so... Uh oh, oh, you know what? You know what? I'm happy with that Simba. I'm, I'm going to come and watch you instead. <clears throat> That's going to take a lot of practice. I'm not going to lie, but it shows how it shows how you do it at least. Go on, then, friggin' smarty man, Simba. We could make a human centipede or a helicopter centipede. Right now, my frame rate is crap. It's the frame rate. The frame rate that's doing it. It's hard, isn't it? It's really hard. It's like one of those things, once you've learned how to do it, it'll probably be quite easy. Like learning to refuel in the Tomcat for the first time. Really hard. And you sort of realize how it works, and then after that, you just get it every time. I mean, literally, my frame rate's eight. All right, well, I gotta come and stick it in you. Yeah, I'm bouncing between six and nine. It's this laptop that I'm flying on. Oh, he's on a laptop. Oh, yeah, I forgot. All right, we'll let you off. Um, anyway, that was a bit of fun. Uh, but it shows that it's possible. Uh, while we're in the air, Simba, why don't we quickly go and see what this bird can do? I haven't, like I said, I haven't actually had time to fly it yet. I've been so... Right, I'm going to put the collective a maximum and see what she can do. Look at the speed of the thing. Oh, my God, she's... Oh, she's breaking apart. Uh, that was that was retreating blade stall, I think. Okay, so it's about 180. She starts to give up. Right, watch this. Do a wheelie burn. Do a barrel roll. Oh, with my big willy out. Big willy getting jiggy with it. All right, that works. Now let's try a loop. This may go wrong. Okay, 193 knots is retreating blade stall, Valley viewers. That means, you know, it's basically you can't go any faster or you lose control. Okay, watch this. Papa has literally got a brand new bag. Oh, so sexy. So sexy. Not really a loop, is it? Ah, oh, Lancelot. I'm gonna launch that friggin' boil. Ah! Can't do a loop. Can do a friggin' barrel roll, though. Right, next, multi crew. This is a bit experimental at the moment, but it promises to be some fun. So, we've got Rotary 1 here. I'm gonna get in as the pilot, and I'm gonna go briefing and hold your horses while I load in. Okay, Simba, you're gonna get in as my co pilot. I accept him. Accept. Say when you're in. I'm in. Right, next, I'm gonna use this rotary and turn it to that one there. Then I'm going to press enter twice. One, two. Then I'm going to press one for networking. One. I'm going to be uh, one here and you're going to be two co-pilot. Are you ready for us to press one and two? Yep. One. Okay, accepting. So I have to do the same steps that you did, whereas on the that MCD display it said uh, create as the pilot which is what you did as number one and I'm connected to the co-pilot so I had to hit number two after I hit connect it'll ask me what number player I want to be so mm -hmm. I'm gonna hit player two yeah uh, after I've done that it says connection state connected right you are now connected to me the reason we did that valued viewers is not so he can take control of the, the aircraft it's so that it, it kind of syncs the multi crew so if he presses a switch then I see the switch moving uh, but we're just gonna treat it simply for the time being we're just gonna fly so Simba I'm gonna uh, have a fly and see if you can see your plane moving again uh, disclaimer yep. this is fairly off the ground how about that right which way am I turning you are rotating to the right how about that right let's get a stable now you are going to press not yet but you're going to press the C button to take command and take command when you're ready I'm hands off Simba has control I have control that's already right I'm going to see if I can go into the back while you're flying this is friggin cool oh my god I can go in the back which seat are you in? Uh, left. Yes, I can do it. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. I can't wait till we get some machine gun in it. Uh, dun, 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 dun. You were back right. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Going back right. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Friggin' cool. And coming back to the front. How about that? Awesome. Right, I'm going to take command, Simba, so just get a nice level, please. I've requested control. So you actually have to give yeah. me control. Yeah. I accidentally set it up with you as the priority, which is a very bad thing to do. Right, Simba, you got the bad choice. We've got one more thing to test, which is the damage model. 
which has been told is not really done yet at all, but um, let's go and have a look. I should say, VRS seems to be modelled as well as that auto rotate is modelled. Yes, auto rotate does work. I'd say the damage model works in that at least it can blow up, um, but in terms of um, blowing bits off it and stuff like that, I, I'm pretty sure it's not there. So. Let me just summarise that. We've had to do this in a hurry. We didn't realise it was coming out this weekend, so we've literally just charged home, turned our computers on, and done this literally as we've been recording. So apologies if it's not that professional, but, you know, you've got to do what you can do. From what I've seen, Simba, that really is amazing. I'd say it's probably along the standard of that C-130 that came out. I don't know if it's they're using the same guys or not. I haven't checked yet. By the way, you can blow off the tail rotors and the rotors. Uh, it just seems really good to fly. It, it, again, it's a bit kind of KA50-ish, but I think it's supposed to be like that. But otherwise, it seems fine. I mean, I don't know what a black hole is supposed to fly like, so I'm, I'm not really qualified to speak. Everything really kind of seems to work. A bit more work to do on the radios. Well, hopefully, guns will come in at some point, and I can get an M60 banging away a, a corner. It's just it's such a shame. Like the C-130, like the A4, it's so wasted on single player. We can't get it into multiplayer. It's so frustrating having it not as an official mod. Uh, I'm just super impressed all around. I was expecting just a very basic SFME typey mod with maybe a few buttons to press, but this is almost a full module. It really is quite crazy, and the guys are saying they're going to expand it even further, which is ridiculous. Just shows you the crazy state that things are coming to at the moment. You've had a bit more time in it, Simba. This is one of those cases where the module maker, I've been watching these guys for a good six, six, seven months now, wondering, you know, just as they're posting updates and all the videos that they were showing, I'm just like, man, when's this thing coming out? When's this coming out? I'm glad that they waited till it was at the state mm -hmm. that it was in. It's just about right, yeah. it. mm. There's a lot of, we get a lot of mods that are not this refined mm -hmm. when they first come out. Agreed. So this is a, definitely a, you can get in it, fly it, feel like you're actually accomplishing stuff and having fun. And you're not just flying something around that has the body of what you want. Uh, from what I've know of that handful of real life Blackhawk pilots that I've met, it is a rather easy helicopter to fly. It'll suit me then. And it's a good one to start with. Right, so conclusion, really chuffed with it. It's free, so go and download it and fly about and have some fun. That's an hors d'oeuvre. Thanks, Simba, for sorting some bits out. And I'll see the rest of you later. Bye-bye.